Today we're going to be talking about an equation that can help you calculate the speed of sound based on temperature. Now why is it the temperature affects the speed of sound? Well it's because sound waves use air molecules in order to travel. So if air is made up of molecules and those molecules are vibrating, which is what gives them their temperature, then if the temperature of those molecules is greater, then they'll be vibrating more. That's actually what temperature is. It's the increased vibration of matter. So if things are vibrating more, they'll knock into other particles more often, which is actually the way that sound is transferred, by molecules knocking into other molecules, hence the transferring of a sound wave. So higher temperatures actually correspond to faster sound. So if you were trying to shout to your friend, then it'd be more effective to shout on a hot day. Go figure. Okay, so how are we actually going to use this information? Well, there's a very handy equation. Don't worry, it looks scary at first. It's easy to use. The equation states velocity of sound, Vs, equals 331 plus 0 0.6 times the temperature in Celsius. Now, you may or may not know what Celsius is. It's a way of measuring temperature using the metric system. If you're familiar, great. If not, we'll get there. For right now, it's just hot or cold with a number attached. So let's see how this will be used. Here's our example problem. Adele is serenading her uninterested neighbors from a nearby rooftop. Since her neighbors refuse to come to the window to listen, the only one who will hear Adele's hit single, Hello, is Adele. She hears an echo of her own voice 0.15 seconds after she sings. A nearby thermometer reads 28 degrees Celsius. How far apart are the two buildings? Now, right off the bat, that question at the very end, how far apart are the two buildings, that may not seem related to any of the numbers or values that were given in this question, but they actually are. The numbers you were given, the 0.15 seconds and the 28 degrees Celsius, just those two things, when used in combination, can help you find out the distance between these two buildings. You have to have some knowledge of sound, and you have to know the equations that go along with sound, one of which we just learned. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so how far apart are the two buildings? So that is a distance, and we were given a time measurement of 0 0.15 seconds as the time it takes for an echo of Adele to reach Adele. So what do we do with that information? Well, we have time and we have distance. Time and distance is usually one other ingredient mm -hmm. in an equation that we can use. That would be this equation, and the equation is velocity of any object equals the displacement or the distance that it travels divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. V equals x divided by t. Now we can use this equation to find out how far apart the two buildings are because that's a distance and x in this case represents the distance. So distance that the sound wave travels is going to be what x is solving for in this case. So first thing we need to do now that we've identified what equation we're going to use, we have to rearrange it and I'm noticing that if I want to solve this equation for x rather than v, which it currently solves for, I need to get that t out of there because x has to be by itself in order for us to be solving for x. So how do I get rid of a t? Well, right now x is being divided by t, so if I multiply by t on both sides, that would give me this. Here's a new rearranged version of the same equation. Displacement or distance, x, equals velocity of an object, times the amount of time it takes to travel that distance or displacement. So x equals v times t. Now that's just a rearranged version of the previous equation. Okay, so now we can just plug in our numbers, right? Okay, so x is equal to v times t. So what is the v? v is the speed of the object in question. What is the object? Well, it's not really an object, it's a wave. It's a sound wave that Adele sends out of her mouth towards the other building. Now actually, I'm noticing we don't have that information given to us in the question. So we have to figure that out on our own. Now we are given t. t in this case is going to be the 0 0.15 seconds that it takes for Adele to hear herself. So that's clearly t, but what is v? That's the question. Well, remember a few minutes ago, I was talking about an equation that can help you find out the velocity of sound. And the only thing that we need to find out the velocity of sound is the temperature of the air that the sound is traveling through. So what was that equation? Well, of course mm -hmm. you recall exactly that it was this equation. Vs, or velocity of sound, equals 331 plus 0 0.6 times temperature in Celsius. Now, before we actually use this equation, I want to point out, if the temperature was 0 degrees Celsius, also known as the temperature of ice as it freezes from water, 
If it were that cold, if it were zero, then the velocity of sound would automatically have to be 331. Just something interesting to note, that's kind of like the default number when we're at zero degrees. If we're warmer than ice being frozen, then sound is gonna be faster than 331. If the temperature is colder than ice being frozen, then the velocity of sound is gonna be slower. So keep that in mind, hotter air means faster. Okay, so let's actually use this equation, the green one. Let's look back up into the problem and see what numbers or values were given that could be useful here. Okay, so it looks like Tc, temperature in Celsius, is the only variable that we can plug anything into in that new equation. So let's look up into the problem and I see, aha, a nearby thermometer reads 28 degrees Celsius. So I'll plug 28 in for Tc. That will make our equation look like this. Now it says Vs equals 331 plus 0 0.6 times 28 and no need to include your unit there. It's already assumed that your units are in there. Okay, so let's actually do this a little bit further. Let's get our imaginary calculators out. And we find that 331 plus 0 0.6 times 2.8 can be simplified to 331 plus 16.8, which was the 0.6 times 28. And then again with our imaginary calculators, we find that 331 plus 16.8 equals 347.8 meters per second. So using only the reading from a thermometer that was outdoors with Adele, hi Adele, hello, we found out that the speed of sound near that area is 347.8 meters per second. That's pretty impressive. You can find that out just from the temperature of the air. It's pretty cool on its own. But now we'll use this information to solve the previous problem. So if we look back up, we realize we were kind of halfway through solving the original problem, which is how far apart are these two buildings? We were given T, which is 0.15 seconds, the time measurement, but we weren't given V. But now we've solved for V using different information. Pretty resourceful, nice job. So V is something that we'll now plug back in into the top of the problem. We're gonna take that 347.8 and we're going to multiply it by the 0.15 we were given originally. So now we are truly calculating X because X is equal to V, 347.8, times T, 0.15. So you'd think that that would be it. Now we can plug in our calculators doo -doo 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 -doo, and we'll get our answer, but nope, not quite. Some of you might have figured this out right off the bat, but this is not actually going to give us the right answer for how far apart these two buildings are. Now, why is that? Well, it's because this is an echo problem. What does that mean? That means that the sound is gonna travel from Adele towards the building, but then it's also gonna travel from the building back to Adele. So that's inevitably gonna complicate our problem because at first we thought we were just solving a distance problem, but really it's an echo distance problem. So something has to change here. The time measurement that we were given, the 0.15 seconds, that's the amount of time it took for the sound wave to travel from Adele to the building and then back from the building to Adele. So it's almost like the sound wave traveled double the distance of the distance between the two buildings. So we should account for that. And the way we can account for that, and actually there's a number of ways you could do it, but the way that we're gonna do it this time is we're gonna take that time measurement of 0.15 and we're gonna cut it in half because half of that time is the amount of time it would take for the sound wave to just go in one direction, half the journey. So that's gonna be the real number. And now you can actually get out your imaginary calculator and go, do, 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 go, go ahead, I'll, I'll wait. Okay, did you do it? Good. So clearly you just got this number. The number is 26. Now that's rounded to significant figures, uh, but that is our answer. So there you go. The building is 26 meters away from the other building. And there you go.